Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And I want to title this message, Don't Miss Your Moment. Don't miss your moment. Turn to someone next to you and say, don't miss your moment. The story of Christmas is a story of time. It's a story of moments. And I, I've always been fascinated with the idea of, of time and how, how fast it ticks, how fast it goes by. That we literally are never promised another hour. We never know when it's going to be our last minute on earth or when it's going to be our last minute with somebody or when it might be our last moment or opportunity to do something that happens literally only in a window of time. As we're coming to the end of 2021, I've just been reflecting on this year and all the different moments that have happened. And, and, and even just even in the last two weeks, I was looking at my phone and I was looking on the photos and I have way too many photos on here. But as I was looking at my photos, you could kind of pinch in, can you guys see that? Literally, these are photos. There's way too many photos on here. And you could kind of zoom in and you could find moments. And I was looking at moments like even just the, the rooftop revival service last year. I was looking at moments with the family, moments at the lake, moments here at the church, moments on staff celebrating birthdays, celebrating anniversaries, celebrating even the opening of our new building, celebrating the 40-year anniversary here as a church. And I was scrolling through my moments and I was thinking about how Christmas is really a, it's a story about moments. It's a story about making the most of the moments that we have. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 1, it says, it came to pass. I love the New King James Version in, in, in verse 1. It says, and it came to pass. Everybody say, it came to pass. <laughs> this year has come to pass. And I am so thankful that we have come to the end of this year. And we are all here together. We're still alive. Come on, how many are thankful for this year? What God has done what he's doing, what he's about to do. Some of us could have died this year. Some of us had near-death experiences. How many of y'all should have died at least once this year? Some of y'all are like, I don't know, but probably, yes. And, and, and in those moments this year where we could have literally not been here, we could have lost our lives, we could have gone through something that was tragic, we're still standing, we're still breathing, we still have a reason to worship, we're still in church, you made it through another year, you're still strong, you're still alive, this is a day to celebrate, it came to pass. You know, I remember sitting at this basketball game and, and the other team had, had literally uh, had like a really good run for the next, for like two minutes in a row, they were scoring buckets and one of our guys had an open shot, he shoots it and it was an air ball. And the other team, the stands, they start chanting, air ball, air ball, air ball. And I was getting frustrated. And even though I'm a pastor, I was like, we need to chant something back at these guys. And so I'm trying to think, what can we chant? What can we chant? And I look up and I realize we're winning this game. They might have had a good run. We might have had an air ball, but we are still ahead on the scoreboard. So I start looking at the guys next to me. I'm like, scoreboard, scoreboard, scoreboard. We start chanting it back at them. And, and, and what we were doing is we were shouting louder than the enemy. You need to finish this year. Don't miss your moment to shout with victory, to tell the devil, you won this year. He lost. You're still standing. You're still in church. You still got a reason to worship. You might have had some rough moments this year, but you're still alive. Go ahead and take 10 seconds to give God praise and shout scoreboard at the enemy. And I was thinking, you know, even as I was looking at my pictures this year, I was like, you know, we've come through a lot this year. Our family, everything. We've walked through a lot this year. And we've had some moments where it might have been difficult. We've had some moments where it might have been um, frustrating or even boring during certain seasons. Not a whole lot, whole lot going on. But I have a whole lot more to give thanks for than I do to be frustrated or disappointed about. As I was looking at pictures on my phone, I, I, I just came across some moments in the last two weeks that I wanted to show you. Um, so throw up the first picture. This picture um, was from 10 days ago. I got a phone call, and it was literally on Wednesday, and they said, hey, Channel 6 wants to do an interview with you, but you've got to get there in the next hour and a half, and they want to interview you about the Christmas production. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. And um, in my mind, I was like, I don't know if I have a whole lot of time to get there because we have rehearsals. There's a lot going on. I could have easily made excuses to not show up. Most of the time, we miss our moments, not because we don't have opportunities, but because we are too lazy to show up. We will make excuses. We'll say, I got a lot going on. I just don't know if I have time for that. 
I don't know if I could really stop and do that right now. I don't know if I really want to buy them a present this year for Christmas. When is the best time to make the most of a moment that God is creating for you? Right now. Right now, because time comes to pass. Today comes to pass. We only have this moment right here, right now, once in our lifetime. We will never get this moment back. This 11 a.m. service that you are sitting in, that you are watching online right now, it is happening and it will be over in the next hour. And some of y'all are already thinking about what's next. And this week will go by really fast and you'll never get it back again. Some of y'all are like, I am okay with that. I am ready for next year. Next year, new year, new me. No, new year, same you. Until you literally learn how to make the most of your time, you carry the same stinky attitude into the next page on the calendar. Turning the page on a calendar doesn't change your heart, doesn't change your attitude, doesn't change your circumstances. Just because we step into January doesn't mean we step into a new us. We just step into another week. And until I learn how to make the most of this week, then I'll never make the most of next week. Until I learn how to celebrate and finish this year strong, then I'll never start next year strong. How I handle this week determines how I handle next week and how I handle being here right now with you. What gets in the way of Christmas present is Christmas past. What gets in the way of celebrating today, what God is doing is that we're consumed with so many things going on. And so when I got that phone call, and I want you to throw that picture back up, I got that phone call and I, I said, okay, I'll be there. So I start Googling, how do, how do I get to Channel 6, you know, headquarters? <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out where it is. Is it in Tulsa? I don't know. And so I figured out it's by Guthrie Green. So I start driving there. I pull up, and I literally am, I'm thinking in my mind, I missed my moment. Like, they're already live on the news, and they told me this is a live segment. This is not pre-taped or anything. So I go running in. I'm sprinting, and, and, and the security guard stops me. He goes, who are you? I was like, I'm Paul. And he's like, what are you doing here? I was like, I'm on the news. He's like, for what? I was like, I'm talking about Christmas. And he was like, are you sure? Do you know where you're going? I was like, it's happening right now. So he pushes the button. I go through the door. And literally, as I'm running up the stairs, they're like, you're on. You're on. Throw this mic on. I threw the mic on. I sit down. And I look really calm right here. <laughs> but I was breathing through my nose. I was like... <sighs> And the man said, tell me about Victory's Christmas production. For the next three minutes, I preached the gospel live on Channel 6 News. And we invited our city. And last week, hundreds of people gave their lives to Jesus. And maybe some of them came because of that moment right there. But I would have missed that moment had I made excuses. The Christmas story is a story about making the most of the moments that you're in. It says, and it came to pass that Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken for the entire Roman world. While Quirinius was still the governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. Now, this was an urgent moment. This was a window in time. They had to get home by a certain time in order to be registered. So Joseph and Mary, they were hurrying towards their hometown. She was also pregnant, and pregnancy also refers to time because it only lasts for nine months. It's a temporary moment for a woman who's giving birth to a baby. She's laboring for a season, and then the delivery comes. Some of you have been laboring for a season, and God says, you're about to see a delivery. You're about to see a deliverance. You're about to see a due date for the dream that's been inside you for a long time. It's, it's, there's windows of time. As I was driving up to the church last week, right after that news interview, I pulled into the parking lot, and right in front of me, the sky had turned orange. The air was interesting that day, and it was a moment, and I thought, I may not get this sunset ever again. God, you painted a masterpiece today, so I parked my car at 5.05 p.m., and I got outside with my phone. I said, wow, God, you're amazing, and I just began to worship God, you don't need a band to worship. You don't need a church service to worship Jesus. You just need to look at the sunset and go, God, you deserve the glory. Worthy is your name. Don't miss your moment to worship. So I sat in the parking lot. I walked around. just started taking pictures. I found someone. I said, hey, will you take my picture? You know, out there in the parking lot with the sunset behind me. And it was gorgeous. And I would have missed that moment had I been in a hurry. And some of us, were going into Christmas week, and all we can think about is the to-do list. Even as you're sitting in service right now, you are missing what I'm saying. Some of y'all are like, what's he talking about? <laughs> is it time to go? Or we're leaving now? Okay. 
You'll walk out here in 30 minutes and you won't know what I just said. Turn to the person next to you and say, tune in, Tokyo. <laughs> Don't miss your moment. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, who's Tokyo? Where am I? Is it Christmas yet? <laughs> My kids have been counting down Christmas. They've been waking me up every morning and they go, 11 more days. <laughs> Liam, this was scary. Liam woke me up early in the morning, 5 a.m. like yesterday. And I open my eyes and he's like right in front of my face and he goes, 10 more days. <laughs> I was like, he's just, you know, he can't wait for Christmas. He can't wait. He doesn't want to miss his moment. He doesn't want me to miss his moment. He doesn't want me to forget about buying him a present. You know, he's like, where's the presents? We're going to get them. We're going to get them. But I think so many of us, we're missing moments because we're busy, we're preoccupied, we're consumed with past situations. And I want to give you four ways to not miss your moment. Number one, don't miss your moment to look up. Don't miss your moment to look up. Look at this Christmas story. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem. He had to go up, which meant he had to look up. And he would go to the town of David because he belonged to the house in the line of David. Now, Joseph was dealing with a lot of disappointment because his girlfriend got pregnant and it wasn't his baby. <laughs> and so in his mind, he was wrestling with, do I stay in this relationship that's confusing, that's causing more harm in my heart than, than help, or do I leave? Until an angel interrupted him in his sleep. God had to get into his thought life in order to change his plans because as a man thinketh, so is he. So if I think defeated, if I think disappointed, if I think like I'm deflated, if I think that I've missed my chance, if, if I think that, that things aren't going to turn around in my relationship with Mary, then I got my head down until God lifts my head up and says, hold up, don't make a permanent decision because of a temporary feeling, Joseph. Things are about to change for the better. Don't miss your moment to look up and see your wife. Don't miss your moment to look up and propose to your girlfriend. Don't miss your moment. She won't wait around forever, Joseph. Don't miss your moment. Holy Spirit, I'm speaking to somebody. Don't miss your moment to look up. Time is passing us by. Even during the offering song, I was sitting at the piano. And we have these things called in-ears right here. And, and you put them in your ear and, and it's... It's our bass player, Guy, back there. He's, he's got a talkback mic, and, and our drummer has a click track, Brandon. And um, the song started, right? And I can hear the click. And I can hear Guy saying, it's your time. Verse 1. Okay, start singing right now, Paul. <laughs> You missed your moment. We're going to keep playing until you sing. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, You owned your moment right there. You sounded good. And worthy is your sound really good. I remember I was at this Broadway several years ago. I worked on the East Coast, and I was, um, I was a camp counselor. And so one weekend, we went to New York City. We took a road trip up there. And uh, it was year 2005. And there was this brand new Broadway that was, that was happening there in New York City. And so I had never been to one. And so one of my friends was like, let's go, you know. And uh, I was, <laughs> not every Broadway in New York is Christian friendly. Um, <laughs> Or family friendly, you know. Uh, but I remember this guy was standing on the stage and the piano was playing this now. And I was waiting for him to sing. Everyone in the room was like, is he going to sing? Is he going to sing? And he said, 525,600 minutes. Five 
You guys sound really good. We could just sit here and sing songs all day. Turn to the person next to you and say, don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. Life is passing you by. The story about that, that, that song and the story about the guy who wrote it is that he died when he was 39 years old. He had this feeling that he would die before 40. And he had these dreams of writing songs and plays that the world would sing and the world would know. And he wasn't sure how long he had left and he tells this story that, that in one year, he went to four different funerals of people in their 30s. And he started just weeping, realizing time is running out. I only have a few short moments left to live. My dad lived like this. The room you're sitting in is a room that was built with a sense of urgency, that we had a window of time. We've got to get this done for my son. We've got to get this done for my daughters. We've got to get this done for the next generation. We've got to get this done. The world needs an ark. Time is running out. The rain is about to fall. Noah, build, 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 because time is running out. Don't miss your moment. Some of you have been sitting on songs and dreams and books and ideas and businesses as if you have the next 80 years to figure it out. And God says, you are not promised tomorrow. Don't miss your moment, Paul. Don't miss your moment, Joseph. Time is running out. Get to Bethlehem. So he went to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him. And she was expecting, expecting, expecting a moment for this baby inside her to be born. And while they were there, the time came to completion. The days came to completion. The time came. The time is about to come for your dream to come true. And the baby was born. The time she gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him in cloths, she placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them. Don't miss your moment to make room for Jesus this week. Don't miss your moment. You won't get this week back. It's going to happen and it'll be over. You won't get th this year. Is, you have 10 days left in 2021. Whatever it is you need to finish, go ahead and finish because how you finish is how you start the next year. And if you finish with a sense of laziness, well, I don't want to try to go to, you know, do an interview. I don't want to do this. We're living in a world that doesn't want to show up to work, that doesn't want to show up to do anything. And we'd rather just, you know, receive whatever it is that, that people want to give us. But I'm telling you, the world, the future, the harvest belongs to the laborers who are willing to get out in the field and bring in the harvest, the impact. You were not born to just Netflix and chill. You were not born to just sit on a couch your whole life. You were born to do something significant. You were born to make a difference. Moments are passing you by. Don't miss your moment to look up. My dad used to look up at the dinner table and he would say, this is it. This is it, Paul. This is it, Sarah, Ruthie, John. This is it. This is a moment for us to love each other. I love you. I love you. And we were like, this is odd how he's acting. It's as if he's not sure if he's going to be here next year. It's as, it's, as if he, it's as if he's thinking, I don't know if this is my last moment with my kids, but I don't want to treat any moment as if I have 100 years with these people. I want to make the most while this last week, right after the Christmas production, our family decided kind of last minute to make a moment. By the way, you don't have to plan a moment out years in advance. You can make the most of a moment right in the moment. <laughs> and so after the Christmas production, we realized we had a day off on Monday. And so let's drive. So we drove down to Dallas and we, we, we got a, a, a van and we loaded up a bunch of kids, a couple friends and their kids. And it was stinky. And these toddlers were pooping and peeing and screaming and fighting. And it was chaos, but it was a moment. <laughs> and we drove down to Great Wolf Lodge in Dallas. And there's these pools in there. So we're swimming in the pools. And who knows what is in these pools? But there are <laughs> hundreds of kids. And we're all in there. And, and it, was, it, was, it was a precious moment with our children. See, and in fact, this last week, while we were in the pool, when we were out of town, and, and, and our family had driven out of town to go to this hotel with this pool, 
One of my children had snuck past me, and Ashley wasn't there. She was taking care of other stuff, and so I had, I had all the kids, <laughs> which was just wild, and I had my friends were there also to help me a little bit, but we all kind of got preoccupied, and I was taking care of Ellie right here, I had Liam right here, Benny was over there, and I didn't realize Mac had snuck past me. Now, Mac is three years old, and when I turned around, I could hear a scream, and in this large pool, there was probably 100 plus kids, and there was a lifeguard over here, lifeguard over here, lifeguard over there. Life, there was four lifeguards, but I turned around, and about 100 feet away, Mac had drifted towards the deep end, and this pool was a wave pool, so there was waves coming, and he's, he's floating, and he's screaming, and I could tell the waves were coming over him, but I'm holding Ellie, and I said, Liam, hold Ellie. I start screaming, somebody save him, somebody save him, that boy right there, and so I just start swimming and running towards that area and I finally get him and I lift him up and he's crying and I'm holding him up against my chest and I'm crying because I'm thinking I almost just lost my three-year-old and and so I I had a word with the lifeguard (laughs) and I said he was right in front of you and she said I'm sorry I wasn't looking I said I know I saw that and I said we've got to pay attention these, these children are all around here. And she said, I know, I'm so sorry. I, I looked away for, for a little bit. And I started thinking how important it is to keep our eyes up. How important, not just when kids are in a pool, but while, while kids are growing up. How important it is to keep our eyes up right at the person that's looking at us. How often are people talking to us and our eyes are down? We're not, we're not even paying attention to what's happening. Don't miss your moment to look up. So the shepherds, they heard the angel. The angel of the Lord appeared to them. Look up. And the angel said, do not be afraid. Number two, don't miss your moment to listen up. Don't miss your moment to listen up. As they begin to listen, the angel began to speak to them. Do not be afraid, Victory Church. Do not be afraid, Christian brothers and sisters. For I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all People, y'all, the Bible is not condemnation. The Bible is good news. The Bi- Some people say, I just feel judged when I come to church. You should feel saved. You should feel loved. You should feel forgiven. You should feel accepted. You should feel God sent his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his son, not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Listen up, church. This is not a word of condemnation. This is not a word of judgment. This is not a word to stir up strife. This word pierces through CNN and Fox News and MSNBC. This word pierces through the COVID variants of Amra Khan and all the different variants out there. This word pierces through Dr. Fauci and all the different governmental restrictions that are trying to come. This word pierces through the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news that is great joy for all people. Come on, how many are thankful for the joy of the Lord? Listen up. Don't miss your moment to listen up. We're listening to so many voices. We're listening to podcasts. We're listening to so many news things, and we're reading articles, and we're listening. And God says, listen to me. Do not be afraid. The voice of the Lord is speaking. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy today. Everybody say today. Today. Notice that the angel didn't say tomorrow, (laughs) next week, (laughs) next year. When the calendar changes, things are going to get better in your life. January 1st. No, he says today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is a moment to worship. Today is a moment to encourage. Today is your moment to forgive. Don't miss your moment to let go of something that you just need to let go of. Don't spend another day holding on to bitterness. Don't spend another day holding on to an encouraging word that you could give today. Don't put off for tomorrow what needs to get done today. We have to-do list this week, all of you. You're thinking about your to-do list. Go ahead and put at the top of that to-do list that you would do what God's asking you to do today. That you would put that on the top of your to-do list. Who do I need to pray for? Who do I need to encourage? I want to take 10 seconds just to give praise to God. Go ahead and just take 10 seconds just to worship God. That's one thing you can do right here, right now. Cross it off the to-do list. Come on, give him praise. That's a golf clap. Give him like a good, big time celebration victory. Hey! Come on, Jesus. So I don't have a picture. 
And I should have sent this picture to my friend up there, but I didn't send it. A month ago, our Victory Boys um, football team beat a major team. We beat Beggs, and they were ranked much higher than us. They were like top in the state, and it was a big deal. We were playing for the district championship. It was on our home field, and we literally won in the last second. It was like a last second touchdown victory that we had. And our stands just, like literally people started running from the stands. I was one of the first guys to run out there. And I start running, and people just started running out on the field. The whole stand just emptied out onto the field. People were lifting each other up. I found my nephew, Luke Freeman, lifted him up in the air. I'm hugging him, and then he finds his papa. And he sees his papa, and he had just lost Gigi. She just went to heaven. And no one knew that it was going to happen that fast. You never know when it's going to be your last church service with somebody, when it's going to be your last week with somebody. But he saw Papa, and Papa started running out on the victory football field, and he lifted Papa in the air. And it was a moment. It was a moment I'll never forget. I happened to snap the picture on my phone, and I sent it to their family. And, and it's one of those moments that, that's ingrained in our minds how loud we got celebrating the victory of that day. We had a tough year. They had a tough season. You might have had some rough things happen this year, but you have a reason to worship today. You have a reason to give thanks today. Don't let the devil outshout you today. Don't let the devil think that he won the year. Go ahead and give him praise one more time. I know we've been doing it. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. We have short moments, short opportunities to engage, to experience, to act on, to say words that we'll never get a chance to say again. It's like that window passes and you go, snap, I should have said that. I wish I would have said that then. If I could go back, if there was a time machine and I could go back, but you can't because time moves forward. This is why today is the day to make the most of your moments. So as soon as the shepherds heard what the angels had to say, it says in verse 15, when the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem now and let us see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Verse 16, so they hurried off. There was an urgency in their steps. We don't have time to waste. This child is growing up. We've got to see this baby as a baby. Don't miss your moments to look at your children. And stop wishing away the diapers, Paul David Doherty. And enjoy the season that you're in. Because this season moves fast. You blink and they're graduating from high school. You blink and they're getting married. You blink and the whole year is over. And days are long and nights are long, but years are fast. Don't miss this moment. So the shepherds hurried because there was an urgency. We've got to find the baby while he's still a baby. we got to find Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. Look at this. They didn't miss the moment to speak a word of encouragement to the parents. When's the best time to encourage parents? When's the best time to say something nice about somebody's baby? Some of y'all are like, I ain't seen no good looking babies. <laughs> I'm lying if I say their baby looks cute. When's the best time to speak a compliment to somebody? When's the best time to prophesy over your children? Is it after they've messed up or in the middle, like right before, like right now? The, the, the best time to speak life is today. The best time to prophesy is now. The best time to compliment, to encourage. The best time to come alongside of those parents and say, we're with you. It's not next year, not when they're in a crisis, but right now. Let's stop waiting for people to mess up before we come and lift them up. Let's lift them up while they're still in this process of becoming who God's called them to be. So the shepherds came there and they began to encourage Mary and Joseph. And when they saw him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it, here's number three, don't miss your moment to light up. So number one, don't miss your moment to look up. Number two, don't miss your moment to listen up. And number three, don't miss your moment to light up. These shepherds shared what they experienced. They found other people who needed to hear the good news. They found other people who didn't know about the power of this Messiah. They found other people who needed to know God sees them too. That if God's speaking to us, God wants to speak to you. Someone needs you to light up. 
You may be the only Christmas lights they see this year. You may be the only light they experience. You might be the only Jesus they encounter in their lifetime. This morning, I was at Starbucks. I was getting coffee, and I want the band to come out. I was, I was getting a coffee, and I asked the baristas across the, the desk. I said, hey, what are you doing for Christmas? And one said, oh, I'm going to be in town doing nothing, and I was going to invite them to Christmas Eve service, and I did. The other one said, I'm performing this week. I was like, where are you performing at? And um, I was like, you know, thinking maybe she's performing as a violinist at, at somewhere. And she says, no, I'm performing as an elf at the strip bar. And I was like, okay. And um, nice. And I'll be with Santa Claus. And I'm the representative of the drag queens in the LGBT community. And I just kept my face just looking. I said, hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know what? The world needs to know that the church is not going to shun people that might sin different than you've sinned that might live a lifestyle that you don't understand. And I think just my, my presence there, just smiling and saying, you should come to our Christmas Eve service if you can. I want our church to be a church where all people can come in, where we don't just welcome people in who look like us, dress like us, think like us, sin like we did. You're like, well, I'm not that bad of a sinner. I just sinned with a little bit of gossip this last week. Got a little impatient, had a little bit of envy, jealousy when I saw what they got for Christmas. They got the couch that I wanted, you know. But I didn't sin like them. No, no, no. Those girls needed an invitation. I remember walking out of Walmart a while back, and, and I, was, I, I was walking into Walmart, and I was headed in there, and this guy was walking out. I didn't know him, but I felt the Lord was saying, tell him that I love him. I was like, okay. So I'm walking towards him. He's got a Slipknot t-shirt on, and it's like clowns. No, no, no. It was, oh, it was a band called Insane Clown Posse. That's what it was, not Slipknot. And it was like clowns stabbing each other. And it was just weird and crazy. And I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. And so he's walking past me. And again, I'm so glad that the love of God supersedes our human judgments of people. That we judge people by the cover of the book. But God says, he is my child. Doesn't matter how he dresses or how he identifies himself or what shirt he's wearing. He is my kid. I don't create accidents. So you interrupt him like the angel interrupted the shepherds and you tell him I love him and you tell him I brought peace and good news of great joy even for the elves and Santa Claus at the strip bar. You go down there. You share the don't go inside. You share the love of Jesus. So I'm out there and this guy's walking. <laughs> None of this is in my notes. We might have to edit some of this out, but hey, you know what? You get, you get this when you come live to church. Don't miss your moment to show up live at the 11 a.m. service. And so, uh, so this guy, you know, I, I, I walk up to him. I said, hey, man. He's carrying his bags. And he's like, he kind of steps back from me. I said, hey, can I help you carry those bags? He goes, no, man. I'm straight. I'm not like that. I'm straight. I was like, I'm not trying to hit on you. <laughs> I think he thought I was trying to hit on him. I was like, what vibes am I putting off right now? I don't mean to put off any of these vibes. I'm straight too. And I was like, I got five kids. Of course I'm straight. So long story short, me and this guy, uh, I said, hey, man, God loves you. And he said, what? He dropped his bags. I said, God loves you. And he said, you're the second person to tell me that in the last week. And I said, yeah. And he drops his bags and he kind of like shakes his head. And he said, I've not heard that my whole life, but in one week, I've heard that twice. You're the second person, second stranger to tell me that. And I said, well, I felt like the Lord wanted me to tell you that. He goes, I think God's trying to speak to me. And I was like, I think he is too. And he says, man, I'm sorry I wouldn't let you carry my bags. I just thought you were weird. I was like, yeah, no, that was weird of me. I was an awkward person. I'm not, I'm not the best at being normal. And, and so... I, you know, we're standing there talking in the parking lot, and I said, can I pray for you? So we start praying. He, he tells me something, something's going on in his family he needed prayer for. And I said, do you want to receive Jesus in your heart? He said, I do. And he accepted Jesus in his heart because I made the most of a moment in the Walmart parking lot. Don't miss your moment to look up. Don't miss your moment to listen up. Don't miss your moment to light up at Starbucks, at Walmart at your house this week, at Quick Trip, at church. And so the shepherds shared this. And it says Mary treasured in verse 19. She treasured all of these things. Don't miss your moment to ponder and reflect on what God's done this year. Because by next year, you'll forget some of those memories. 
I remember when my dad passed, there was a counselor who sat down with our family and he said, the best time to journal about memories of your dad is right now. Because the longer he's gone, you'll start forgetting things. So write down every single memory you can think of. Literally, just start racking your brain and go back when you were five years old, six years old, seven years old. Write down every memory right now. And so I just set aside anything else I was doing for that, that whole week. And I just sat in my journal every day. And I was just writing down memories, memories. Because I didn't want to forget anything about my childhood, my middle school, my high school years, my college years with dad. And so Mary pondered. Don't miss your moment to ponder. Don't miss your moment to journal. Don't miss your moment to reflect on what God was doing. And the shepherds returned and they glorified and praised God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had, had been told. Verse 21, on the eighth day, this is important, on the eighth day, don't miss your moment on the eighth day when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name that the angel had given him. Don't miss your moment to name your kids. Don't miss your moment to name your future. Don't miss your moment to name your business, to name your dreams before he was conceived. And when the time came, time is coming for the fulfillment of prophecies and promises that God put on you. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem. Now, let me stop. There were other temples in Israel they could have gone to, but they chose to go to the temple in Jerusalem. They could have gone to other places. I remember my dad had a dream to take our whole family to the Holy Land, to do a Holy Land tour. And it was like one of his dreams that he wanted to do with all of us, and he did it. He fulfilled that dream. Never give up on a dream, even if it's just to take your kids on vacation to Disney. Never let go of a dream that God puts in your heart to go to Israel, to go on a mission trip to Africa, whatever it is, hold on to it till it comes to pass. But while we were there, we visited Bethlehem. We visited Jericho, Samaria, Sychar, Galilee. And I remember seeing temples and, and the tour guide said, there's temples all over Israel. They've been here. During Jesus' time, there was multiple temples where people would gather and they would read scrolls from Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. They would read scrolls of, about the, the early stories that Moses shared. They didn't have a Bible. They just had scrolls and priests. Mary and Joseph could have gone to any temple, but they chose this temple. You could have gone to any church today, but you chose Victory Church. And it's no coincidence that you're here. And it's no coincidence that God has planted you in this room. And I say all this to say, Mary and Joseph had no clue that being in that temple on that day, in that city, was going to create an intersection in time that would only happen if they were where God wanted them to be. You don't even realize God is creating moments for you in this room, moments for you at your workplace, moments for you that could only happen because you're in Tulsa or you're in that city that God has you in and you are watching and you're listening and you're looking up and you're lighting up and God says, here it is. This is the moment. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon. Simeon didn't know Joseph. He didn't know Mary. They had no relationship. They were just in the same church service at the same time. Some of you are sitting on a row that you don't know them. They don't know you, but God's about to use him to bless you. God's about to use you to bless her. God's about to use y'all to make an impact on them. God connects people in church. God connects relationships in church. And this man who had been praying, he was righteous and devout, and he was waiting for his moment, for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was on him. You are never too old to miss your moment. You are never past. If there's breath in your lungs, God still has moments for you. God still has dreams to fulfill through you. We're living in a time where, where our nation is electing the oldest presidents in the history of our country. God is going to use people in their old age and in their young age. He's looking for people who will show up, who will listen up, who will look up, who will wake up, who will get out of their beds and off their couches and be in the place that he's called them to be. He's looking for anyone who says, I don't want to miss my moment. And so Simeon was there. And it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. Something inside him was telling him, go. Go into the temple courts. Go here. You're going to hear a voice that leads you and directs you and begins to speak through you. This past year, I was looking on my phone. I was looking at moments and memories, and I was looking at specific stuff. And I came across our 40-year anniversary as a church. 
And I, I played on the piano that same weekend in April of 2021. It feels like a long time ago. That was just six or seven months ago. And, um, and right before, the, the week before that anniversary, I felt this urgency in my heart, this stirring, write a song about your dad and about the church. And I didn't have anything, but I just sat down at the piano. What key are y'all in? C? Okay. So I just sat down at the piano and I was trying to think of something. And I felt the Lord was saying, this is a moment that you won't get back. You need to write a song that is for this hour, for your church, for your family. And I just started kind of praying, Lord, just speak to me. What am I supposed to sing here? And these words started coming. And isn't he faithful through the ages? Isn't he faithful through the storms? Isn't he faithful through the changes? Isn't he faithful through it all? And when I look back on my life, I see the evidence of you and all that your faithfulness, Jesus, has brought us through. And I remember sitting down and playing that. And I shared it with our worship pastors. And I said, Sam, Daniel, we got to finish this song. And we have five days because that anniversary is coming up. And I remember sitting down and, and the, the lyrics just started coming with the window of time, the pressure that, that, that I was sensing in my heart to, to finish it. Sometimes we want to take all the pressure off. And God says, that pressure is healthy for your dreams. That pressure is what you need to produce the fruit I've called you to produce. If you don't live without pressure, you'll never produce a squirt gun only releases according to the pressure that's been pumped for that squirt. You know the super soakers. I wish I had a super soaker right here. The more pressure you have, the more you can produce. And it came out. That song was birthed. And I remember walking into the room and singing that song and just the emotions. How many of y'all were here for the 40-year anniversary weekend? And we celebrated 40 years as a church. And I walked over to the front row and Grand Grand was sitting there. She turns 98 this next year. She had tears coming down her eyes. She looks around at this room that's packed. And she says, oh, I'm so glad I got to see this. I can just imagine Simeon saying, this is what I've been wanting to see. I've been waiting for this moment. Just to, just to know that God is so faithful from generation to generation. That he has been faithful with Billy Joe. He's been faithful. He's going to be faithful in the future. That he's carried us like a scarlet thread. He's, he's, he's been there. I'm so glad I get to see this. God's going to let you see things before you die. God's going to let you see. My dad got to see this room built before he passed away. He knew. I think he knew his time was running out. I think he knew he didn't have much time left. I think God kind of just stirs us to live with an urgency to say, you got to do this. And you got to do this now. You've got to say this. You've got to act on this. You're not promised tomorrow. Life is a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. Don't miss your moment to look up, to listen up, to light up. And so Simeon begins to speak. And he, and he speaks over this child. He takes this child in his arms as Mary and Joseph brought the child to be consecrated by the law in the temple. And he says, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. My eyes have seen your salvation. My eyes have seen what you have prepared since the beginning of time. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Don't miss your moment, church. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said. Then Simeon blessed him and said, this child is destined. Speak that over your child this week. This child is destined. Liam is destined. Benny is destined. Jude is destined. Isaac is destined. Lizzie is destined. There's a destiny on your kids. There's a destiny on your life. Stop letting the enemy determine the prophecy over your future. You speak it out. This child is destined. God's going to use this child to bring hope. There will be many whose hearts will be revealed. And God will use this child to bring salvation. And a sword will pierce your soul, Mary. This child is going to break your heart in a good way. Because every heart in the world needed to be broken from the callousness that had surrounded it. God was sending his son into the world. And there was another prophet in the church service named Anna. And she was there. And when she saw it, she didn't miss her moment to prophesy. 
prophesy. She made the most of her moment to encourage. She began to worship in that moment. Here's number four right here. Don't miss your moment to lift up. And I want you to stand your feet all over this room. Don't miss your moment to look up, to listen up, to light up, and to look up, to lift up. <laughs> Lots of L's right there. And as you lift up, lift up the name of Jesus. Many of us in this room are carrying heavy burdens. We're carrying lists and things that we're thinking, oh, I got to get this done. I got to do this. And we're busy. And we can make a lot of excuses. We can make a lot of reasons to say, I just don't have time or I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like lifting up the name. But Jesus says, this is it. When the wise men saw the star, they knew they had a window of time to follow that star. They had to look up. They had to keep their eyes up this week. Keep your eyes up. Try a whole lot this week not to lift, not to, not to be down, but to look up. Keep your eyes on the star. And as they followed that star, they reached the child, and they brought their gifts, their offerings. And the Bible says they worshiped at the child's feet. They worshiped the Messiah, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they begin to lift up the name that's above every name. I want us just to close our eyes all over this place. I don't know what kind of year you've had. I don't know what you've been walking through in the last week or two weeks or three weeks. And maybe you feel consumed with busyness. Maybe you feel overwhelmed by just burdens in life. Maybe you feel exhausted because you've been going, 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 going. And, and, and you're thinking, Paul, I don't have time to make any moments. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. And maybe what you need to do is make a moment where you stop running after the things of this world and you start lifting up the name of Jesus. Maybe you need to interrupt your busy hustle for money and you need to say, God, this Christmas is not about me. This is about you. It is from you and through you and to you. Maybe you need to make a moment to release your burdens, your cares, your bitterness, your strife. Maybe you need to say today, I don't want to miss my moment to forgive myself and others for some things that I've been holding against them and myself for a long time. Don't miss your moment. You're not promised tomorrow. Why hold on to it another day? Whatever it is today with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here today and the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, that you need to surrender some stuff, that you need to lay down some stuff, you need to let go of some stuff, you need to act on some stuff, I want you to raise your hand across this room. God's talking to you, sir. God's talking to you, ma'am. He's talking to you right there in that situation, in that, that home life, whatever it is, hands going up all over this room. You're here today and you say, I just need to, I need to lay some things down at the feet of God. I need to release some things. I need to trust God. I need him to relieve some burdens, some weariness. If you raised your hand or you wanted to raise your hand, or you're here today and you say, I just need to get down to the altar. I need Jesus. I want you to leave your seat. Come and meet me at this altar. We're just going to take these next few minutes to just worship Jesus, to fix our focus and our attention on him come and find a place at this altar and as you do just close your eyes lift your hands and let's just begin to sing to God today let's just begin to worship God today
not hold you. And death could not hold you. The veil torn before you. The silence of the voice of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. Before you are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no rival. You have no evil. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours. Is
ahead and just lift him up this morning. We're faithful forever. You are faithful. And you are all your promises. It's all your promises. Every promise, one, two, three, now. And all your promises are yes and amen. God coming beside you and he's lifting off heavy burdens that you've been carrying. And he says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. I just see him lifting off a bag of of just heavy loads that you've been holding over your shoulders. And he's saying, I got that. He's saying, I want you to make the most of the moments that I've given you. I don't want you to be too busy that you miss it. I, I don't want you to be too tired you miss it. So God says, I'm going to give you rest and I'm going to give you windows of opportunity. And he says, you'll know when to act on it. You'll know. He says, I'm going to bring you across paths of people who need to hear that interrupting voice of hope. I just hear God saying, I'm going to set up intersections the same way that Joseph and Mary intersected with Simeon and Anna in the temple, God says, there's going to be people that I'm going to use you to bless this week through words of encouragement, through witnessing to them, paying for their coffee. God says, I'm going to use you this week to just make an impact. And there's going to be moments with your family, with friends, with strangers. And God says, but I'm also leading other people that are going to bless you this week. And and they're going to be aware in those moments. They're going to be awake to my voice where they come and they they pray for you. They encourage you. They bless you. God says, I'm going to make sure that everything that I've called you to do, I've put it inside you to do. God says, I'm taking care of the needs and the details and the, the desires. And I hear the Lord just saying, just like in the Christmas story, as I brought the wise men, to bless Mary and Joseph. They didn't know the journey that was ahead of them. They didn't know what they would need as they would go down to Egypt and and have to raise the child there for a little bit. But God says, I'm going before you and behind you. I'm I'm preparing and I'm providing for you everything you need for what's next. But don't miss this moment. I want us just to say this prayer together. Say, Jesus, thank you for your mercy your grace, your peace, your rest, your joy. I receive it. I release the stress, the anxiety, shame, burdens that you didn't call me to bear. I let it go and I trust in you. You are the author, the finisher of my faith. You are my savior. You gave your life for me. So, Lord, I surrender to you. I'm all yours today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you.